Hey all, welcome to Shatrek. This is Raj here. Friends, the market is not looking that great this morning, but we have seen that before and the market turns out to be uh, really good after it opens. So let's hope that it does the same thing today, but I have my own thoughts because as I mentioned before, I feel that all the markets are seriously stretched. I'm going to give you a few examples of where I think the stretch is, uh, just as a leading example out there of all the things that are probably not that great about the market, which the market is not looking at right now. But if they start looking at all of them collectively, then things could change. Right now, Dow futures are down 0.14, S&P futures down 0.16, and Nasdaq futures down 0.3, with oil up very marginally at 0.09. And some of the headlines that I'm uh, looking at out here uh, is Alphabet and Tesla reach fresh highs, joining Amazon and Meta, and pushing Nasdaq past 20,000. So Nasdaq got a second wind, thanks to Alpha, Alphabet and Tesla. Now, let us look at Alphabet. Alphabet was the laggard among the MAG5 stocks, and uh, it has caught up because of Willow. Of course, Willow is the good um, uh, development. I, do, I don't dispute the valuation of Alphabet as such. I think it's good. But with regard to Tesla, I never thought it would reach 400. The fundamentals do not support it. It's the Trump effect. So it's just a matter of time before the two of them fall out. Uh, in the past administration also, Tesla was uh, chief uh, Musk was part of the CEO roundtable, which was supposed to advise Trump. And Elon Musk was the first one to resign from that round table. So the big egos are going to be clashing and Tesla shareholders have to be careful about that. That would be my opinion. Now, the fact that Alphabet has got back its value, I think it has reached where it should. And um, uh, right now, I think Alphabet and Tesla have pulled Nasdaq as far as they can. So today we have to see if there is any other factor that can make it move forward. Another inconsistency I would like to point out is MicroStrategy. There are uh, there are reasons why micro strategy stock price is going up. It is because the underlying Bitcoin uh, has got value in there right now. But Bitcoin is notorious for dropping steeply 20 or 30 percent and then staying low for a longer period of time. So the value of any company, in my opinion, should be based on the valuation of the product that it creates, the increase in the productivity that it creates year after year should enable the share price to increase because they are creating more margins and uh, rewarding the stockholders. That is the right way to go about things. MicroStrategy looks to me like a company uh, which was once an IT company, which is now pretending to be a, a Bitcoin ETF. They would rather reconstitute themselves as a Bitcoin ETF than at least the safeguards of an ETF would apply. Uh, right now, those safeguards do not apply. The other problem with these kind of companies which um, have Bitcoin as a major holding is that they become a standing target for hackers. And it's just a matter of time before some hackers break through. And then it's going to be difficult for the investors to get the value. At least these are my two cents on the risk profile of these companies. But these are all stuff that is happening in the background, which the market is not paying attention to. And look at this other new News article out here which says only 16% of holiday shoppers plan to spend more this season, uh, CNBC survey shows. So uh, it shows a little bit of tenderness in the consumer sentiment and consumer confidence, which will probably come out in future um, economic data. So all these things are something we have to keep in mind. I feel that the markets are already stretched. So let's go and have a look at the TradingView platform. So we have exponential moving averages, uh, which we have always used from before, and all of them are on top of the price out here, showing that we are in a uh, bearish situation in the futures. And this is the one minute chart. So in the micro uh, instance, things are looking bearish. But if we zoom out and go to look at a one day chart, then we can see that we are in this uh, bullish wedge out here, and we got pushed down by this diagonal red line uh, this morning. Yesterday we were stopped by it and today we have been pushed down. And if you look at it going forward, somewhere around uh, 6th of February, a decision will have to be made if not made earlier. So at that point of time, the price has to decide whether it's going to go down or it's going to go up. So right now, 
the RSI has plenty of room and it has cooled off. So we are seeing this red candle out here. Maybe a little bit of consolidation is in order. MACD is still bullish, but it's tending towards a signal line. So a word of caution out there. Next, let us go on to the indicators and look at, uh, uh, at NASDAQ itself. NASDAQ here in real time had broken over this diagonal line of resistance that we had before and converted that into a support. And this morning, uh, we saw in the futures that things are a bit negative. It's quite possible that we'll be bouncing along this support and stay above this line of support uh, unless the selling pressure is significant to push us back into this channel. Now, let us look at QQQ, which is down 0.28% in pre-market trades and our RSI still has room and MACD is still bullish. So, I think QQQ can turn positive. Uh, next, I want to go and have a look at those three or four stocks that I uh, spoke to you about before. Uh, the first one is Google. Google had a huge gap up out here and went up further. If you recollect in the last few videos, I've been talking about this reverse head and shoulders pattern. I've been talking about a target of 190.80. That was hard coming by, uh, basically because uh, the market was not valuing Google as much as it did the other Mag 5 or Mag 6 stocks. Google was a laggard. Now with the news of Willow, it had this gap up the confidence has been restored on Google and so Google has gone up again it has gained significantly and pre-market it's up 0.30 percent and it's touching this line of resistance on the RSI that I put out here uh, which is at 37.79 percent in the past that has been a signal for it to turn down so I'm expecting the RSI to cool down price to consolidate uh, MACD is still very bullish but I think a sideways movement is required. And we have, uh, I'm going to draw another horizontal line out here uh, to show the support uh, that we'll find. We have a support here, uh, which happens to be uh, at 192.84. So if things were to turn back for uh, Google, I think 192.84 will be a huge support. Right now we are at 197.43, so I don't think we are gonna come all the way down there immediately. But some profit taking will definitely be there. Uh, next, I'm gonna look at Tesla. As you can see, Tesla is very close to its RSI resistance of 89.41. Right now it's at 79.35. MACD is still bullish, so there is a lot of juice in the tank here for Tesla. So Tesla is going to go up further and the cumulative effect of all of this is going to, it's going to clam, it's going to camouflage the stocks which are falling down and even though other stocks may be falling down, these uh, Tesla and the other stocks like Google are going to show that the index is strong. It gives you a false impression of strength. So be careful about that. Uh, and I wanted to talk to you about uh, Amazon. Amazon again is showing real good strength. It has gone above this diagonal line of uh, resistance that it had. It tested it again. So it's very strong out here. RSI is uh, overbought. MACD is still very strong. So these are all companies which are all uh, very uh, stretched at this point of time and they could give in any time. And now I would like to bring out my uh, new indicator. I'll just shut off the previous indicators so that you can see only my indicator out here. So my indicator gives me a buy and sell uh, signal. This blue line uh, is the 10 day period. Uh, when I say 10 day period, if I have one day as the candle strength, then I'm looking at this being the average of 10 days. And then the other line that I have here, the red line is a hundred period uh, av moving average. So if I have a, uh, each candle for one day, this is a hundred day moving average. So 10 by hundred is what I have done. So naturally when I shift from uh, one day time frame to one minute time frame, where each of my candles become a one minute candle, then this blue line becomes a, a 10 minute uh, moving average and the red line becomes a 100 minute uh, moving average. And whenever the blue line is above uh, the red line, I can buy. Whenever the blue line is below uh, the red line, I need to sell. So the intersection point is where the buy and sell signals come in. So what I did was I test drove it on FNGU yesterday. I bought it somewhere around 597 after this gap up as soon as the market opened. And I was looking at this blue line and this red line. 
So as long as the distance was there, I was very happy, but I was also wary that the red line was moving up faster. So we were somewhere out here at 614. When the price dropped, I, I held up a little while and then it came up again to 615 and then it dropped again, but I still held on because the gap between the red and the blue was still high. And then we came all the way up to 618 and then we dropped and we continued dropping. So somewhere around 400, 617, uh, I decided that I'm going to bail out because I was pretty sure that this blue line was going to come down and cross over the red line, which was coming up. But I was wrong. There was a little bit of moving up and down and the sell signal came much later during the day, somewhere around 628. So the point I want to make here is that when we look at this, guy, this particular indicator, it is, it is good, but it is not as good as it seems. So if you look at the past, it's like hindsight is 2020. So you know that you should have sold somewhere and you should have bought here. And then you should have sold somewhere out here. And you see that there's a huge amount of profit to be made. But in reality, it doesn't work out that way. Uh, because uh, this intersection between the 10 day average and the 100 day average could happen anytime. And sometimes you may end up selling as soon as you buy. So it's not as good as it seems, but it's a very interesting uh, experiment to do. I'm going to make a separate video to show you how I came across this uh, particular uh, algorithm, how I created it using ChatGPT and how I put it into uh, TradingView platform. So those of you who are more interested in learning these things, watch out for that video. I'll try to make it later today. With that, my friends, I'd like to bring this video to an end. Watch out for my video on genomics technical analysis and I'll catch up with you again in the next video. Bye for now.